So even though we face the difficulties of today and tomorrow, I still have a dream. It is a dream deeply rooted in the American dream. I have a dream. My four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. We don't see any American dream. We've experienced only the American nightmare. And what you and I have to let the man know is we are peaceful people. We are loving people. We love everybody who loves us. But we don't love anybody who doesn't love us. We're nonviolent with people who are nonviolent with us. But we are not nonviolent with anyone who is violent with us. All of you know I'm not an integrationist. I still believe the best thing for us to do is go back home to Africa. I feel that nonviolence is really the only way uh, that we can follow, because uh, violence is just so self-defeating. A riot ends up creating many more problems for the Negro community uh, than it solves. You can, through violence, burn down a building, but you can't establish justice. You can murder a murderer, but you can't murder murder through violence. You can murder a hater, but you can't murder hate. And what we are trying to get rid of is hate and injustice and all of these other things that continue the long night of man's inhumanity to man. I would like to make a few comments concerning the difference between the black revolution and the Negro revolution. There's a difference. When you study the historic nature of revolutions, you haven't got a revolution that doesn't involve bloodshed and you're afraid to bleed. I say if you're afraid to bleed, you don't have a peaceful revolution. You don't have a, a, a turn the other cheek revolution. There's no such thing as a nonviolent revolution. Only thing, only kind of revolution that's nonviolent is the Negro revolution. The only revolution based on loving your enemy is the Negro revolution. The only revolution in which the goal is a desegregated lunch counter, a desegregated theater, a desegregated park and a desegregated public toilet. You can sit down next to white folks on the toilet. That's no revolution. You don't know what a revolution is. If you did, you wouldn't use that word. A revolution is bloody. Revolution is hostile. Revolution knows no compromise. Revolution overturns and destroys everything that gets in its way. By any means necessary. It seems to me that there are three ways that oppressed people can deal with their oppression. Well, one is to rise up in the open violence, in physical violence, and some persons have used that method, persons who have been oppressed. But I think the danger of that method is its futility. I feel that violence creates many more social problems than it solves. I feel that um, non-violence, organized, I should say, organized uh, non-violent resistance, is the most powerful weapon, weapon that oppressed people can use in breaking loose from the bondage of oppression. Uh, if passive resistance means uh, just passively accepting violence or injustice, if it means uh, cowardice and stagnant passivity, then there is a difference because nonviolent resistance th does resist. It is dynamically active. It is passive uh, physically, but it is strongly active spiritually. There's a great deal of difference between non-resistance to evil and non-violent resistance. Uh, non-resistance leaves, uh, leaves you in a state of stagnant passivity and deadened complacency, wherein non-violent resistance means that you do resist in a very strong and determined manner. And I think you'll find that if, if uh, Negroes ever have to resort to any kind of physical action to defend themselves, Many white people will be on the side of Negro. Many white people are fed up with, the, with what the Negroes suffer. And this is what I had to become aware of on my pilgrimage to Mecca. I could see then that there are many white people in this country who will side with the Negro in whatever he has to do to protect himself. And I have in my many lectures on college campuses seen many whites, even as a black Muslim, whose uh, reaction to much of what I had to say showed me that they were genuinely concerned. Some weren't genuinely, genuinely concerned, but many of them were. And this element is increasing. I must confess that uh, that dream that I had that day has at many points turned into a nightmare. Now, I'm not one to lose hope. I keep on hoping. 
Uh, I still have faith in the future. But I've had to analyze many things over the last few years, and I would say over the last few months. I've gone through a lot of soul searching and agonizing moments. And I've come to see that uh, we have uh, many more difficult days ahead, and some of the old optimism was a little superficial, and now it must be tempered with a solid realism. And I think the realistic fact is that we still have a long, long way to go,